And although they did draft the running back in this year's draft, according to reports, Gurley won't be the bell cow back for the Rams moving forward. Those days are seemingly over. Sean McVay talked about Gurley's desire to play at a lower weight this season. I want him to feel most comfortable, and that's the most important thing. Uh, what he feels like he can function at, be the all-purpose back that he's been, and, and that's, that's, that's where we're at. So if he says, I'd rather play 5, 10 pounds lighter, um, and he's going to feel better about that, then that's exactly that, what we'll do. And, and I think he's earned the right to be able to tell us how he's feeling um, you know, with a give and take. And, and as long as he's got a why, which I know he does, then you know, we're always receptive to those things. See, a lot of us went into the Super Bowl last year and came out of the Super Bowl, rather, not really fully understanding why Todd Gurley was so ineffective. Now we have some semblance of an idea. Mm -hmm. It is that knee that's been bothering him. What, what are fair expectations for Gurley this coming season now? Uh, well, this is the thing. This is what you know. When he misses the type of time that he missed late in the season, when they are playing for what they were playing for, you knew something was wrong with his knee. And it all started week number one, where he had an odd landing on the sideline. And people say, wow, week number one, four months later? Yes, the wear and tear on your body, ultimately it got the best of him. And you could see from a game planning standpoint, that would be like him in the Super Bowl is like Steph Curry, we're gonna play him, he's only gonna get five shots. Well, what the heck's wrong with Steph Curry? There would have to be something wrong. And that's what Nick was emphatic about the Super Bowl. There's something wrong with Todd Gurley. We need an answer. Yeah, he's got a chronic knee. He might have an arthritic knee. But I don't like the fact that now the coach is talking about, oh, we're going to reduce his workload, but we just made him the highest paid. It's a Because big problem. what you do upstairs has to match what they do downstairs. But if he can't, he can't. You made a bad decision. And for me, this is really going to test not Ty Gurley, not Jared Goff. This is going to test Sean McVay. Because last season, I know people call you a genius. Well, a genius, he wouldn't have an offense that the tight end would be one of the least notable receivers. In the NFL, there were only seven teams that threw to the tight end less than what the Rams did. So now they need some versatility. And I'm going to put that at Sean McVay. Because if Todd Gurley's out there, they could have utilized him better as a decoy. Why would Todd Gurley's absence hurt him? This offense is a speed offense. They're trying to run the ball, run the ball, and then some type of deception to hit you with the big pass. So Todd Gurley's injury, Cooper Cup at the slot position because they don't have a tight end. So then you could clamp down on the receivers outside. I love the receiving group, but they need some variety. They have to get the tight end involved. And if Todd Gurley's on the field, you have to be able to utilize him in play action as a decoy because the league still respects Todd Gurley if he's on the field. Now. One of the things I love about sports is you can lie through your words all you want, but you're not going to be able to lie through your actions. And the Rams' actions, as far as how they used Todd Gurley and then what they did in the draft, screamed from the hilltops, there is a problem here. The guy that could have won league MVP a couple of times, guy who was one of the most dynamic weapons in the entire league, arguably on a team with Aaron Donald, you could have said was the best player on the team. They stopped using him like that. I mean, going back to week 14, 11 carries for 28 yards. Mm -hmm. Week 15, 12 for 48. He then misses two weeks. They get a bye week. He has a month off. Oh, he looks like Todd Gurley again, that first playoff game. 16 for a buck 15. And then what did he do? The, the time we sounded the alarm bells, that conference championship game against New Orleans, four carries for 10 yards, mm -hmm. and your guy Butterball, C.J. Anderson, is just cutting through the defense? Yeah, he likes to be called Butterbean. Oh, Butterbean, my okay. apologies. 10 carries for 35 in the Super Bowl? Yes. And then you spend a premium draft pick on Daryl Henderson, who, by the way, at Memphis, I know it's smaller school, smaller conference, 1,900 yards, 9 yards per carry, yes. 2,200 yards total, 25 touchdowns. Well, you're getting someone. A guy that you think can actually, is not just going to be, oh, we're going to use him in special lead packages. Just no, you're going to use them a lot. And so I do circle back to the money because this doesn't just impact the Rams' ability to be efficient against their cap. This affects every running back in the league that's waiting to get paid. Finally, running backs thought they had broken through. Todd Gurley got paid early. We had a run on multiple drafts in a row where a running back goes in the top 10. Zeke, Saquon, Gurley. Zeke looks like a star. Saquon looks like a star. Gurley, the oldest of them, looked like a star after one down year and got paid. And now what? What is being, tr what is being proven out, at least in this minuscule sample, is 
the teams that say running back is a fungible position, and even if we have a great one, we are not going to pay him because the shelf life is so short. Mm -hmm. If Todd Gurley can't be your bell cow, well, well, then nobody can for long term. Then, then all of a sudden, you don't think that this news is landing on the Cowboys' desk? Just like, forget the off-the-field stuff with Zeke. The, the saying, man, no matter how great he is early, maybe Emmett Smith doesn't exist anymore. Maybe the guy right. that's going to give you 1,200 yards for a decade straight just doesn't exist anymore. And I think that echo went through NFL teams this offseason. Le'Veon Bell didn't have a bunch of people getting ready to pay him, make him the highest paid running back. Like that negotiation that he had was far tougher than he thought after sitting out Absolutely. with the Pittsburgh Steelers. So the message is getting around there. How much worse off are the Rams if they do have to go to a two back formation than obviously using either Darrell Henderson or someone else they have or trying to squeeze in uh, Todd Gurley? Well, this is the thing, Jenna. If you don't have a featured running back, it's either one or two things. Either you don't have a guy that's good enough or you have a system that you're just going to always use two or three running backs. When you have Todd Gurley on your team, the Todd Gurley that I know, you realize that you have one of the best three down backs. You have a guy that has blazing breakaway speed that really puts fear into the defense. If he doesn't have that speed, if he doesn't have that durability, then I have to change my offense. That's why there's going to be a lot of pressure on Sean McVay. What he decides to do moving forward, I believe that the Rams, the run draft pick, the third round pick from Memphis, he's a legitimate NFL player. A lot like Alvin Kamara when they drafted him behind Mark Ingram. Oh, is Mark Ingram playing for the Saints anymore? No. Because the mayor has taken over. Yeah. He's had a couple good years, and that's the way this goes in the NFL. So this, to me, is Todd Gurley's most important season. But it also speaks the fact that that running back was available in the third round. He's first team All-American. He led the he led the all of college football in yards per touch, and he's available in the third round because people think running back is a position you can find a guy. They, <laughs> they hesitate to spend high draft picks on him, and this is only going to lead to that more. When you ask what it does to the Rams... What was the signature game of the NFL regular season? 54-51, supposed to be wow. in Mexico yes. City between the Rams mm -hmm. and the Chiefs. There was a player on each of those teams. Yeah, people love the coaches, and people. Some, everyone loves Mahomes. Some people love golf. You've got you Sammy Watkins, you have Brandon Cooks. There's a player on each team that makes those teams special. For the Rams, it was Todd Gurley. For the Chiefs, it was Tyree Kill. For two very different reasons, both teams have to be thinking long term. Are we? Are, can these guys not be in our long term plans anymore at that level? And what does that do to the two most dynamic offenses in football? It, this is. I hope Todd Gurley gets back to being Todd Gurley. But it, it seems like the Rams are coming to the realization that that probably is not going to happen. And it seemed like just. That long since he was maybe going to win league MVP. If he's not 100% too, Jenna, I don't believe they have a chance to be a top five offense. I don't believe they're a Super Bowl contender if they're not a top five offense. So a lot of that depends on Todd Gurley and his overall health. All right, you mentioned the Chiefs. We are going to talk about what this coming season will mean for the Chiefs, what they have to do. But coming up on the other side, back to basketball. Is Steph Curry's legacy in question heading into game three of the finals? That's next. Stars leave. There's a real.